Hey there, this video comes from the Pig Cake Magic Academy. The reason I'm putting it here is to hopefully entice you to join. Some people think that I'm idiotic for putting out the entire content here for you to watch, but you get access to over 1200 videos, I believe 1300 at this point, if you join. So go ahead, you can look at the link in the description section below and see the type of content that I'm putting out on the Academy. So make sure to check it out after you watch the video. So on today's Card Academy lesson, we're gonna talk about this idea of the human scale. Now you've had every single card magician that had any sort of accolade come up with a different handling of this effect. It's a very simple effect to follow and today I'm gonna to show you guys a variation of something that I believe is from Roberto Giobi. Now I do know that this goes before him, but the idea behind this particular handling is closest to Roberto Giobi. So the setup for this is going to be very, very simple. All we're going to do is reverse the 20th card from the top of the deck. In this case, we have the four of clubs, uh, but that could be any card you want. And it's just going to be reversed because this is going to act as our key card. Now, later on in the video, we're going to talk about different variations of this particular idea. However, I think this is the simplest one to do. Now, if you do want repeatability, I do recommend getting a short card for this particular use of the key card. But again, we're going to talk about that in more detail in the latter half of the video. So right now, this is the setup. And what you're going to do is you're going to have the spectator cut off a small portion of cards. Now, it's very important that they don't cut past that card because then the trick isn't going to work in the way that's presented. So what you're going to do is tell the spectator just to cut off a small amount of cards you don't want to see, but just make sure that it's just not a lot because you don't want this to go on forever. Now, usually if you found the right spectator, they're going to cut off a smaller portion of cards. If you found a terrible spectator, they're not going to be there by the time that you turn around. Uh, so for this particular handling, the spectator cuts off the cards. And now you are going to attempt to try to guess how many cards they cut off. So you're going to take the deck of cards. And if you want, you could give it a little bit of a false shuffle or a false mix as long as it keeps the deck in the same order. And you're going to spread through until you see your key card. Now, this is going to be essentially a variation of the oops control where you're going to turn this card over and you're going to obtain a break below it as you score the cards up. Now, that allows you to get a break directly underneath what is ostensibly 20 cards from the top of the deck, counting the cards that the spectator has in their own hands. Keep in mind, you don't know what cards they have or how many cards they have. However, you do know that your break is underneath 20 cards from the top of the deck. So that's going to tell you all the information that you're going to need in a moment in order to match the amount of cards that they have. So what you're going to do is you're going to spread the cards off and you're going to count them. So in this case, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I notice that at my break at the four clubs is 11 cards. Now, if the original total of the cards above the break were 20, then that means that the spectator is going to have nine cards in their hand just due to simple logic and math. So you're going to take these cards and you're going to put them in your hand. And now you're going to tell the spectator to take out the cards and hold them in their own hands. So if you want, you could actually take these cards in your own hand and go for a little bit of a balancing act here. But I think it's more impressive if the spectator is the one that is balancing the cards and you are just trying to pick up the amount of balance that they have. So at this point, all you need to do is discard two cards to make your pack match their pack because remember i had 11 here they have nine in order to make this nine i need to remove two cards so now when we both count these packets they're going to be the exact same number of cards so that's one two three four five six seven eight and nine so it's a very interesting and easy method and a very simple to do it doesn't require a lot of work or a lot of math you're just essentially subtracting whatever it is that you have and that's going to be the amount of cards the spectator has so you just need to be able to match their set so in terms of handling, you do have a couple of different options. If you do choose to go with the oops control route, which is having that card face up as your key card, as a visual key card, it's again very important that you don't draw attention to it. So when you spread the cards after the spectator cut off their initial half, you're going to spread the cards. You're going to notice to yourself that there's a card face up. And all you're going to do is turn it face down as you continue your exposition. You're not going to draw attention to it. You're not going to say, oh, whoops, there's a card that's face up. It's just a non-event. How many times have you spread the cards and had a card face up by accident? That's the exact same thing that you're trying to channel with this particular oops control. Now, the only problem with this handling is that doesn't bear repeatability because you could only do that subterfuge once without uh, having the spectator question it. So the way to get around that is by using a short card. So now in the 20th position, I have a short card and it's going to be the exact same handling. The only difference is that when the spectator cuts off their half, all I'm going to do is dribble the cards until I reach my short and get my break right there the same exact way that I would have had I spread the cards and had a visual key card. So it's going to be the exact same handling. Only difference is that this time I'm riffling up 
and that's about it. Now, what this allows you to do is repeatability because now you can do the effect more than once without bearing any sort of attention to the handling because you're using the, the short card, which is not a visible short card. So that way you could actually repeat the effect without any sort of scrutiny. So it's a nice little bit of a way of getting around that because the spectator is gonna inevitably ask you to repeat it and you're more than welcome to repeat it. Now, if you wanna do it with a different total, you're more than welcome to do that. Just keep in mind that you are gonna have to do a little bit more math. So in this case, 20 cards, I think is the perfect number to do this for. Now, as far as presentation, you're more than welcome to spin this however it is that you want. If you want, you can have both packets in your hand like this as you're trying to reduce cards in order to match the amount of cards that the spectator has. If you want, what you could do is what I suggested in the actual explanation, which is have the spectator hold on to the cards. So that, that way, all you're doing is trying to balance the cards in their hands. Now, if you want to add a little bit more credibility, you could hold on to the spectator's hand as you try to ascertain how many cards they have, just make it a little bit more challenging. But those are two different presentational approaches as to trying to match the amount of cards that the spectator has in their hand. So it's a nice little way of doing it. If you want, you could have the cards kept by the spectator in their pocket and you could do it somehow psychically uh, because you have actual knowledge of the card. It doesn't matter if they take it out or not. You could actually have a revelation whether you match it uh, without even the spectator touching the cards or without you ever seeing the cards to begin with. So you could count the cards on a table. The spectator then takes the cards out of their pocket. They count the cards and they see that it matches each and every single time. This is what I have to subject myself here in order to do this particular outro, but I think this is a wonderful little bit of a method and an interesting principle. And of course, it works for any number of cards that you want. You could do this with 20, 26, 30, but do keep in mind that you are gonna have to change the handling depending on the cards. So initially, with 20 cards, I think the math isn't even anything, it's just logical. If you, for example, see that you have 10 cards, you know that the spectator is gonna have 10 cards. If you have nine cards, you know the spectator is gonna have 11 cards. So you're gonna need to do that little bit of math during the actual routining, but it's nothing difficult. I know certainly when it comes to doing a little bit of math in routines, I'm definitely not a fan, but this, I wouldn't even consider any sort of math at all. And you do have a wonderful effect at that. So that's this week's lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for your members of the Pick Cake Card Academy, and I hope to see you on the next one. I see you again, when I see you again, when I see you again, when I see you again. When I see you again, when I see you again, when I see you again, when I see you again.